In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use physics in Quick 2 as well as the integration with Physics Editor. At the end of the tutorial, you're going to see an app like that. The balls will come from the sky and you're going to be able to rotate your screen and bring back the balls from the sky again. Here they go. Here in Photoshop, I have this composition. As you can see, there are several layers representing the balls in different sizes. There's a, a layer for the logo and of course the background. Let's start create a new project. Let's name it Falling and set it to iPad as the main device. I'm going to set this current document, which is the Falling PSD, and I'll keep the orientation in the landscape. Before doing anything else, let's export the image. So take a look here, just to check if export images is enabled, and press the publish. Let's check the project. Nothing moves as expected. Our next step is to add some physics. Let's go back to Photoshop. Let's go to the physics menu and set the environment. Let's accept the gravity in X and Y. Enable the invert physics on screen rotation. Keep it normal. And create virtual walls around the screen. Let's just disable the top and click save. Our next step is to set all layer containing a ball as a physical body. To do that, simply click the layer and select the set body properties. The issue with that is you need to do it for every layer and we don't have time for that. So let's simply select all layers, name it SB containing the balls and just press the set body properties once. When the screen appears, everything that you set here are going to be set to all the balls. So each ball is going to be a dynamic body, meaning that they are going to interact with physics. Let's keep all the options as is, but just change the shape as circle and click save. Let's check our progress publishing the project again. But before doing that, let's disable the export image as we don't need it anymore. Publish. It's working. If we rotate the screens, you see the physics is working as well. However, we see a few opportunities here. The balls are pretty much falling from their original uh, position into quick and none of them are interacting with the logo. Let's fix that. Let's make every ball falling from a different initial position all the time. Let's select all of them again. Come here to layer and replacements and click the layer properties. Let's randomize position. Let's skip 0 and 1024 for the X position. And in the Y, let's add it to minus 500 and 0. What I did here was to set the boundaries of the randomized positions. Just have it and click Save. Let's see our project now. Every time that I start the project, the balls are coming from different positions. Let's set the shape of our logo. Select the logo, physics, set body properties. Let's set this logo as a static, meaning it will not interact with physics, and use the shape as rectangular for this example. In order to facilitate the visualization, I'm going to go back to the properties of the physical environment and set it to hybrid. And let's publish again. Set the environment as hybrid allows us to understand the shape of each body. Clearly, 
rectangular is not the best option for our logo. Let's add it to the body logo. Here we have the option to select a polygon as a shape for our logo, which is the best option in our case. We can do it in two ways. We can use a path uh, that we can draw directly in Photoshop, but the issue here is Corona just accept paths uh, with maximum of eight points and we are going to be able to create a perfect path with just 18 points for this case. Another option is to use Fisk Editor, which is a very nice uh, software that draws all the paths for us and creates Corona code. You can uh, learn more about it and even download the trial version at www.codeandweb.com. We are going to use it to create one. So we don't have it yet. Let's cancel and start the physics editor.